Hi everyone, Joe here and welcome back to another video. Today we are continuing my series of me reviewing my cancer journey and today we're taking a look at a special day from 2019. Uh, we're taking a look at my birthday, which is a strange one. Uh, I made a video and this was back when we thought I had anaplastic thyroid cancer and things were messed up, complicated and doom was definitely on the horizon. Now I'm looking at it from eyes in 2023 where things are messed up, complicated and doom is on the horizon so I guess we'll see what's changed, my attitude, has that changed and have a look at some of the things I've said. Uh, I don't I don't know if my attitude would have changed. I'm pretty sure that I've maintained a consistent outlook and a consistent focus uh, throughout the whole thing. But we will have a look. We will get in, have a listen, see what Joe from 2019 uh, has to say. And I can tell you one thing, he certainly looks different. Very different to how I look now. Um, <laughs> And seeing us side by side, it's almost like we're two different people. Uh, but we will uh, get on with it, shall we? Also, this is back when my workflow was awful for videos. Hi guys, Joe here again, uh, still alive. And uh, welcome to another... Past Joe was fucking hilarious. A video. Today is my 35th birthday. Now, for lots of people, the big round numbers are their special birthday. But for me, today, my 35th, is a very special birthday. Now, I know this is from four years ago. Four and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half years ago. Now, three and a half years can do... <laughs> can really age you. And bearing in mind that between then and now, I had... Um, I've been through, well, what, four sets of treatment since then? Um, so I did the lanvastinib, cabozantinib, radiotherapy twice. It's it's really weird to look back and I look at it and I'm like, damn, that's one ginger beard. And now it's not. Now this grey bit down here is in this, is in, it's hidden in there somewhere, as is this grey bit. but. Obviously, the cabozantinib did, did my hair colour in, as we know. Um, I was wearing that same colour yesterday. No one thought I was going to get to it, especially me. Uh, and that is down to, well, being told you have months to live. <laughs> so, um, here I am, still going, still kicking. And it's a bit of, it's one of those interesting times to reflect I think and for me I don't think about everything I could have done I can't be dealing with that I think it's very important to look back at the things you have done and in 35 years I feel like I've done quite a lot I had no idea that the three years would involve even more even more like a lot more which is pretty pretty crazy to think about and I remember that I remember in particular this birthday was it was triumph. It had a, a moment of yeah, fuck cancer. Look what I did. And knowing that I was misdiagnosed at the time with anaplastic thyroid cancer when I had poly differential thyroid cancer, and the difference in length of survivability is tenfold, you know, from months to years. And it's a uh, Looking back at it now, knowing how close to the end of the journey we are now as well, it's... I know, I feel like it's complicated. It's a complicated set of emotions now, more than then. Far more complicated. But, well, we'll see what I have to say. I've done lots of things that people wouldn't normally do. I've made a lot of stupid decisions that, in the end, panned out okay. Um used to be an assistant manager in a bank, quit it to go and become a kickboxer. <laughs> Who does that? A uh, bit of a weird one to have done. Um, handling a, a long distance relationship um, across the Atlantic. 
and keeping it going until eventually they're able to move here and you're together. I think many people do that. Don't advise it if you can avoid it. Wouldn't advise it, but if you meet the right person, go for it. But yeah. Yeah, still, I, I remain true on that one is that um, a lot of people, their relationship and who they're with is limited by geography. I am amazingly lucky that I found someone who was willing to move for me and has been absolutely fucking rock solid and been there for me every step of the way. I'm so I am incredibly lucky and um I'm just I've got good taste. <laughs> backhand a compliment to myself um, and I had no idea you've got no idea when you get into a relationship of how you think you're going to handle a situation you don't know how it's going to be at all in any way shape or form but you don't know how it's going to end you don't know how it's going to progress you don't know what they're going to be like in these situations when they crunch but oh my goodness Kim has been a legend I'll tell you that much I just think I've done a lot. I've never really held back when it comes to doing something when I think it's the right thing to do. But there's lots of people who don't have and haven't had those opportunities and or haven't made those decisions I guess because surely you engineer your own opportunity. But God this is going to be a rambling video isn't it? <laughs> like they haven't been since. Be a big time rambling one. Um, now you know where I said months to live a few a well, minute ago. Where are we now? Yeah, probably about a minute ago. Um, stop typing what you're typing right now. I do not want to hear about. Oh, the list is longer. The list is longer. I don't want to hear about Jesus. Jesus will save me, um, and heaven is real, um, and how it's going to be amazing. No, it won't. I don't believe that. I'm an atheist. Um, Anti theist. I've gone one step further. That's something I, I think. I feel like I've become more me. I've become a more kind of concentrated version of me over time. Please stop saying it. Respect my wishes. If you want respect for your beliefs, you have to respect other people's. Now, do I try and convert people who are Christian into atheists? No, no, I don't. Um, I really think if you've read the Bible, uh, you would do that for yourself. Or the Quran or anything like that. Because, you know what? I can't only pick on Christians, can I? Um, Allah won't save me either. Um, but anyway, oh, I'll move on. Oh, and nor will the um, flying spaghetti monster. Just to make sure we're equal opportunities on that. Science might. Anyway, so don't talk to me about Jesus, don't talk to me about <sighs> vegan only diets, low sugar diets, water fasting, um, what else is there? Dog wormer. Um, there's some other ones. There's some other ones. I, I always. It's so difficult because it's so much crap. Antinioplastins, uh, spiritual healers, um, there, there are some others. And and this happens, as time goes on, people suggest more random stuff. Um, and also, suggesting medical treatments as well also goes on the list because it's not suitable. And typically, you're very unlikely to know more than my oncology team my world-leading thyroid cancer specialist oncologist. <laughs> it is very unlikely to know. I think that's what I've learned over the years, is that very unlikely. At this point in time, though, I was not with my world-leading th um, thyroid cancer oncologist. I was with just my consultant, uh, my first oncologist consultant. And uh, he was really bad at delivering bad news. Very bad. Crap. Um... Someone suggested something to me that was absolutely pure poison. Ah, uh, amygdalin. Um, that's, this is me talking about uh, ground up apricot seeds. Cyanide, that's a really good one. Uh, coffee enemas. Um, if you think putting coffee up your bum will cure cancer, you're a fucking mental case. Oh my goodness, that is well up there as a thing that you shouldn't do. Lots of vitamin C, um, fish oil, snake oil, CBD, um, all that. Please stop. Oh my god. I love this guy. He's spot on. 
because actually you know what it doesn't it doesn't help anyone at all because there's no evidence behind it if it worked we'd be cured don't tell me big farmers trying to kill me because it's not because there is far more money in me staying alive than me being dead and having more treatment so just think about that also if you think that you couldn't hide the fact that someone has cured cancer are you mad bro because and this is a really big one is because there is no way you could stop someone wanting to be that person who has cured cancer i would oh my goodness i would email every single paper at the exact same moment and go guys have cured it here's the cure this is what it is i'd make it public i'd make no money off of it and there's nothing you could do to stop me yeah yeah i wouldn't make it in a youtube video right and i wouldn't uh, I, I, I wouldn't have testimonials, I would have results, I'd have test results, I'd have studies, I would uh, have science that backed it up because it's a cure, there's science behind it and it's legit and it's genuine and also I'd make it free, I wouldn't patent it either, imagine that, I wouldn't patent it, which means it would be completely out there for free and no one would know what to do with it and that's if I had the real cure, I don't know. Otherwise, I wouldn't have cancer, would I? Uh, and, and nor would you, if you're watching this. Uh, but yeah, I, I totally agree but with what I'm saying here. And I still would be like that. Uh, you can tell I've got a lot more energy to be angry about stuff back then as well. And I've probably chilled out quite a bit more too. And also, I remember how this video was about my birthday. Friends, family, it would just ripple immediately through the world. And once it's on the internet, it's there forever. And that's what I would do. Anyway, I'm going to move on. I'm going to keep talking. I'm ranting now. And I shouldn't rant even if I am very good at it. Not everyone makes it though, do they? And that's the thing that I really wanted to talk about today, I think. I think that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, not everyone makes it. And I have a lot of thoughts about whether or not I will see my 36th birthday now. <laughs> Fuck, that's old. I'm 38 and I'm sat here and I'm like, how am I gonna see my 39th? I've got six months to go, well, five months to go, until I hit 39, and will I? I have no clue. If you look at the amount of damage that has been done between then and now, I don't know. I don't know. And if I don't, then I don't. The fact I've made it to my 35th and no one thought I would is fantastic. And I'm really, you know what, I'm pretty chuffed with that. And I'm going to set myself a goal going forward, which is I'm going to try and make more than one video every two months. Also, I am going to, I guess, keep up dispelling the bullshit. Because that's the... That's one of the most important things I can do, and give people real facts, real talk, about what it's like living with a terminal condition. And I do hope I've done that, so let me in the comment. Let me know in the comments if I have. I'm reasonably sure I have. Um, I've definitely kept the bullshit shut down as often as possible. That's for sure. Um, Life-limiting condition. Euphemisms all over the place. But yeah, I, I, that's it really. That's what I keep, keep doing. Also, my next goal for staying alive, because that's what I'm working, is uh, my wedding anniversary. Um, that's the that's the next thing, uh, which is on the 8th of September. So that's the next thing that I want to keep going for. Um, and there's a possibility of a trip down to Cornwall. Um, something that's very exciting is my wife and I have booked a trip over to the US. We're going over there end of July, uh, start of August. And let's see her family over there, which um, will be really, really nice. And um, I haven't been over there for years. It was very nice, that trip, actually. Uh, considering the circumstances we went over there under, uh, it was basically for a funeral, <laughs> um, which is not the best set of circumstances to go somewhere. Um, but we did have a, a lovely time and met up. I met up with a, with a friend who was a friend online um, who also had cancer. He's fully really cured now, um, and going strong. And you know, I got to meet him as well, which was which is quite quite nice. I love meeting people who you've spoken to online, loads. 
and then you sit down and you talk to them in real life. It's a bizarre experience. It's great fun. Actually, like five years. So well overdue a visit. Um, yeah, I was expecting to feel a lot more emotional today on my birthday. Did I mention it's my birthday? Um, I was supposed to feel a lot more emotional, but I don't. I feel reasonably calm, a bit pissed off, um, as usual, that's my default state. Um, and yeah, I guess it's, we are where we are at that point. And there's not a lot we can do about it. Um, but something I did want to do, which I have to run off camera for for a minute, which is going to seem like minutes to me, but maybe any seconds to you through the power of editing. Wow. You, that's see, quick, how, wasn't it? see how fast that was. Um, I'm gonna... Also, a bug appeared on the wall. Now, I haven't, I haven't turned to alcohol. This is really important. And to be honest, I barely drink. But what I am going to do... I'm about 20 kilos heavier here than, than I am now. This is some Clark's Bourbon Straight Whiskey. Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Many words, Clark's. It's actually German. Weird, isn't it? Oh. And we're going to have ourselves a drink to everyone who hasn't made it, because I feel like everyone who hasn't made it to the next wow, birthday. Wow, autofocus. Good job. Because there's lots of people out there who haven't. Wow. And I am going to... Oh, Clive. I don't think you... Clive is my cat. I said this last time, and people thought it was hilarious. I miss Clive. I really miss him. He was a great cat. But now we have Alfred and Poe, and they are equally full of personality and chaos. Yes. But the clarification is real, because people might think it's a little old man I live with, and I shout at in the middle of the night when he scratches my furniture. No. But yeah, a drink to everyone who hasn't made it. Um, because all you can do is remember them. And so that's what we're going to do. Deep. Cheers, bro. When did straight whiskey not bother me? There you go. Sign of age. Definite sign of age. I'm calling it time there. Um, So, if you fancy it, subscribe, share, and most importantly, go and give a loved one a hug or a kiss who you haven't and you bloody well should. I always think that. Every day. You know, I, I hug my parents now every single time I see them. And that is oh, uh, watery eye. Um, still have this the same bloody watery eye. Um, it's uh, and I still think it's good advice. Hugging a loved one. Let them know you care. That's very important. Tell them you love them. And I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. The end's not there. It's nowhere fucking near, and I had no idea. I had no idea whatsoever that it wasn't there. The end was nowhere in sight, even, at this point. Uh, we... This was me off treatment completely, which is why I look so... Probably so good, so plump, so um, so full. Um, hair looking very, very nice, thick. Um, I'd probably say it's the same hairline, about the same hairline very different colour hair obviously uh, but even until October of year before last October 2021 my hair was was this colour and so was the beard which is pretty nuts it's not in sight it's over the horizon and I'm going to say the damn same thing that I always say when death comes for me I look him square in the eyes and I'm going to say not today Maybe not tomorrow. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. And hopefully, I'll see you guys next time. Damn. Emotional, right? Like, when you think back of it, that was me thinking about the end still being there. Being right there. Any, any month, I was going to have a scan that would tell me that life was over. Oh, back in one moment. Sorry about that. There's a knock at the door. 
It's the problem with recording stuff. Uh, just had dinner delivered, having fried chicken, which is my pre-radiotherapy meal. I'm having a big meal today, because I don't know how I'm going to feel tomorrow. <coughs> That's for sure. But right, it is weird to think about everything that has been and gone over the last few years. And something I noticed there is looking at my eyes. If you look at them now, both of them, you know, it's one's one side and one's the other. This one doesn't respond to light anymore at all. This one does. So it makes it almost look like I have a glass eye that doesn't respond, which is super weird. And that is due to Horner's syndrome, which is pressure on nerves within the chest cavity, typically caused by cancer, which is no surprise. I might, I'm packed full of it. So that causes your eye to actually stop responding to light which is a very strange thing when you think about it. it's in your chest and it's your eye. You'd think that everything was straight between your brain and your eye, but no it isn't. Okay, well as soon as my dinner has just arrived and we are about 20 something minutes in, um, I'm going to call time for the video and I want to thank everyone for watching. So like, subscribe, leave me a comment if you're finding the series interesting and my retrospective look at what's happened and how I've changed and <laughs> how, I, how, how I've stayed the same because I think I've mainly stayed the same I'm a lot more, I'm definitely wiser older, wiser, that's for sure older, definitely older um, and experienced in life, for sure and my opinions have probably, like I say I've been put through an alchemy set and condensed into more Joe than I ever was before. Strange, right? So, um, if you make it this far, I'm going to leave a word down in the comment section. Condensed. Let's see how many of you spell it right and how many spell it wrong. But right, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.